Thank you, Matt. Meantime, Ohio State back at home this week with 5-1 and one Rutgers in town. And as Mark tells us in the Buckeye Beat, OSU's youth is being served. Counting the punter and kicker, 13 of Ohio State's 24 starters are freshmen or sophomores, a stat that surprised even Urban Meyer. Well, that's a good sign for the future here. You know, I, I knew we were young. That, that I didn't look at that number before. But I think our guys have done a really good job. Much different offense than the... You know, I talked to Coach Holtz briefly, and he, he said it's you know it's a much different offense now than it was last year. And it's because there's a void, and we're there's, we're using skill. Uh, Zeke Elliott's a different little different player than uh, uh, Carlos was, and you got Dontre and Jalen are starting to develop. That gives you a little more flexibility on the perimeter run game too. Defensively, after seeing Navy's triple option and a lot of spread, the Silver Bullets will line up this week against a more traditional attack. It's more of a pro-style system. Uh, a lot of 21, what we call 21 personnel, two backs and a tight end. They'll give you some 22 personnel, two backs and two tight ends. It's a little unconventional, you know, uh, uh, from what we've seen so far this year. But uh, they do a nice job of mixing up their run game and, and uh, play action passes off of it. They can definitely hurt us on a play action pass. So for, uh, for me playing in the secondaries, I have to basically be real disciplined and trust that my brothers are going to stop the run and I just need to focus on the pass. Basically just trust everybody. The play action pass in the two back set is it's a little bit easier for the mic because we can just go. You know, a lot of times it's you know you're fitting the fullback, so you know when you got two backs back there, the first thing you're thinking is stop the run. So I mean, it adds to the passing defense as well. So you know, it's kind of like a blitz, but not all the time. But you know, if you feel the high hat, you'll get back in coverage. If you don't, you know, you just go get the quarterback. OSU's loss to the now four and three Virginia Tech Hokies and seeming elimination from the national discussion continues to gnaw at the Buckeyes. It, it kind of makes you angry. <laughs> it really makes you angry and it makes you want to just basically, that's why we've been practicing so hard lately because we want to come back into that conversation. So I would say that it is great motivation to the team to know that we're not in the, com the topic of conversation. So it, it, it makes us come out and practice and work harder so we can be in that topic. Matchup on Saturday will feature perhaps the two best quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Certainly two of the best in the nation in terms of passing efficiency in Ohio State redshirt freshman J.T. Barrett and Rutgers veteran signal caller Gary Nova. Mike Miller from WMA 1150 joins us now. And Mike, I know you've been on the record as saying that J.T. Barrett is the best quarterback in the Big Ten. A lot of folks saying Gary Nova is the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Yeah, Nova's pretty good, Mark. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I don't think he maybe has the overall physical skills that JT Barrett has. He has a lot more experience, certainly, than, than JT Barrett. Uh, and I think Buckeye fans are going to get a real charge out of checking out Gary Nova. The point is, Nova is very capable with his experience and his throwing skills. Uh, beyond that, I think he's the kind of quarterback the Buckeyes can contain. Also with his Maryland offense, offensive coordinator is Ralph Fridgen. Used to have had a lot of success at Maryland. Now is at Scar uh, Scarlet Knight offensive coordinator. Yep. He brings a new element to this Maryland or the Scar <laughs> Scarlet Knight uh, offense. Yeah, Big Ralph uh, brings uh, he brings a lot of experience. He was an offensive guru uh, when he was with Maryland, and the and the Terps had some high-powered situations. He's a very much was a quarterbacks coach, I guess originally, then an OC, and now back to being an OC after after a head coach. And uh, and Rutgers has a, has an interesting attack. But the, the big problem the Scarlet Knights have simply has been injury. The real powerhouse in their, in their backfield, along with uh, Gary Nova, was a running back, Paul James, who got hurt two weeks ago, and he's gone, and that has really slowed their running game. Yeah, on paper, they don't have much of a rushing attack, so yeah. I'm almost thinking that if you're Rutgers, you're going to try and actually try and run the ball, yeah. thinking that Ohio State's going to be geared to stop the pass. Well, maybe uh, I would frankly dare Rutgers to try and run the ball because I think they'll be ineffective if they do so against Ohio State. They're going to give it a shot uh, with their little scat back. Uh, uh, Desmond Peoples is 5'8", 175 pounds, but I'd be amazed that he would do much damage against Ohio State. I think really what the Buckeyes are facing are, are going to be an aerial assault would be my guess. When Ohio State has the ball, Buckeye offense that is putting up some impressive numbers is breaking records both for the school, for the conference, and even that 45 first down performance against Cincinnati, a national record. 
Can the Rutgers defense slow down Ohio State's offense and keep the Rutgers offense in the game? Only if Rutgers can somehow get their hands uh, on uh, J.T. Barrett and pressure him like he hasn't. Rutgers has an impressive sack total. They're around 20 or so, and that's a little bit of a concern, and that'll be the next challenge, really, for the Ohio State offensive line. If Rutgers can't get to J.T. Barrett, then I, th I see another field day for the Ohio State offense, Mark. Any concern about this Ohio State team coming off another week off? A little bit more, I think, than last time, only because I, I had a, a vibe from the coach that they weren't sure how to spend this off week. The last time, they, they worked a lot of game rep kind of situations. They went at it hard. They seemed a little bit indecisive earlier in, in the week, so it'll be interesting how the week ultimately has played out for Ohio State. So I would say maybe, yes, a bit concerned that they might have lost some of that momentum. Your prediction for Saturday afternoon? Well, as usual, high hopes uh, uh, for the Buckeye prospects. Again, to me, it comes back to uh, can the offensive line continue to show progress and deal with these different looks they're apparently going to get from Rutgers. I think the offense will score points. The defense will, will play as well as they need to. I see the Buckeyes something like 44-21. All right, thank you very much, Mike. As Ohio State welcomes Rutgers into town, homecoming. Ohio State's got a pretty good record when it comes to homecoming for whatever that's worth. Andy, back to you. Thanks, guys. We look forward to Buckeye Insider Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Get your day started right on WOSN. And, of course, every Tuesday at 10 p.m., Mark and Mike get you ready for the upcoming game. Mondays at 9, the Urban Meyer Press Conference. And you can always check out... The website, WOSN.TV, our YouTube channel, has all kinds of extra player interviews and full cuts you don't want to miss. That's all on WOSN. Up next.